for the next part of our retail store design, we're going to look at drawing the left-hand wall. We're going to do it the same method that we drew the right-hand wall. You remember we did this last week. We're going to do it the same way, using our measuring line. But this time, our measuring line is going to begin with our table, which makes sense because our table is and requires an equal-sided box. So we're going to start there. Then we're going to move on to all the displays in the back. Ultimately, one of these two bases is going to be the best one for your store. We're going to just do one. We're detailing just one. So you'll be choosing whichever one works best for you. The way we're going to do that is to do it with elevations. In your package today, there are elevations, and you'll be putting a piece of marker paper over top and beginning your first try at what you want to do with these things, what you can turn them into, depending on what you what your merchandise is like and how you're going to place it. So hopefully you have some reference now that you can look at to help you figure that out. But before we do that, we want to do this drawing. And that's what your in-class one is for today. Now that you've done one like this, this one will go rather easily. It shouldn't take you very long. And then you can get on to your elevation. So you're going to use half a piece of cartridge paper and fold it in half. This time the male figure is in there, but you could easily put a female figure in there now you know how to measure her at about 5'7 or so and project her forward. You can do that. We're going to draw all of these things. There's the built-in display. This one is built-in, remember. We don't see that side. And the figure and your vertical banner your shelving in the corner, the hanging light fixture, your round table, and this is the freestanding display. It's the one away from the wall. It's standing out on the floor. It looks connected to this one, but it isn't. There's space in behind it. Now, you can't have any fewer elements than what are here. You can add more elements if you want, but don't leave any out of it. For the second part, when we're working on our assignment, our second part of our assignment, you, you have these templates. This is kind of the quickest and easiest way to check out your designs and figure out what it, how it is you want to lay your place out. As I mentioned, you have to have at least this many items, but it doesn't have to be these exact items. And on the built-in shelving, I've put shelves at a certain height, but you don't have to keep them there. Depending on what it is your store is selling, you're going to need probably something very different. For example, if I was looking at this store and I wanted my round table to become a display for shirts and ties, then I would know that I would have to plan out. So this is at two and a half feet, and where would the next shelf? It would be about here. And every time I make a note of where I want something to be, I will be able to easily do it on my drawing. So all these measurements are important. And it has that box shape on the front. So how big do I want that to be? Maybe I'll make it this big. So, and that keeps it symmetrical so that when I map it out, I'll know precisely where to put it when I map it out on my drawing. And then I have to see what works for my store and what doesn't. Some of this may not work at all for mine, and I'll have to change it into something else. Or, for example, I really liked having a chair, so maybe I'll go back here and for my men's store I want to have a club chair. So I'll go back and I'll put the three feet for my club chair. And I know now the seat is at one and a half. And the arms are at two and a half. So I know where to put everything. So I'll try my chair here. And maybe have my shelving above it. So you can modify, change things. But for the shelving, I want something a little more elegant. I want something like this molding and the arc over the display. This is three feet, then in the middle of it, I would put my arc. I know now how to do that, because it's half a circle, so I just divide into three. 
So as much as you can, you use the techniques you've been given to work with to draw what you need to draw. So now I have two things that weren't in this elevation to begin with, but that better suit my, my fashion sense is what I'm going for here. Ha <laughs> ha. My client, my store, better suits my merchandise. So I'd have something like that. So that's what this exercise is all about. Determining, and you're going to do as many of these as it takes. And I'm going to have my logo here on my, on my banner. We're designing our banner at the same time. And we have some sort of event happening. So I want to talk about what that's going to look like. And then this is one large display. So I probably have room now in here for mannequins, and, and they can stand on a platform. So all I need for them is six feet, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I can stand them on a bit of a platform, put them about a foot and a quarter up. So all of this planning is going to work one, two, three, four, five, six, and a little bit. So each of my figures will fit in there. So I can figure out how my figures are going to fit. So the first time you try it, you're just doing it very rough like this, but then you refine it afterward. You go in and make it look the way it should look, ultimately. And for my light fixture, maybe I want something really elegant, like a chandelier. And this is where you make those decisions, you see? So that when you go to draw it large, you have a foundation for it. And you also have scale, how big everything is going to be and how it's going to look. So try both of them, although this one you might be already thinking is the one you want. Try them both so that you can see. Now maybe there are shoes down here. Think about that underneath. Because they put these shoes in these displays in the most unusual places. And this might be, there might be a half bust on here as well. You might have something there. And some more shirts down below or stacks. You might have stacks. And hopefully you found some unusual displays when you were looking for your reference, your in-store interiors, so that you could try out some of those as well. So that would be a first pass, but that's not enough, is it? There's not enough detail or enough to tell us really what's going on there. So you'd want to do some more of those. And down at the bottom, you would check that out and see. This one has the chair that I want. And it has a big display, but this big display is out sitting on the floor. It's not in the wall. So I'd have to figure out what I want to put inside there, something. Or do I want to make it in a kiosk? So supposing I'm doing something other than my clothing, and I want this to be a kiosk where I sell something special, I can make it wider, because there's nothing in that corner that I need. And maybe I just keep the banner over the top. Because that's six feet. Maybe I bring the banner here. Maybe I'm selling something special here. And I put someone standing back here as my... If I make this just um, one foot deep, then I've got two feet. If I look at my floor plan, I've got two feet behind it, and that's plenty of room. So I could have someone staffing it and have merchandise on the counter, special merchandise in this special kiosk. 
And then I've got the chair, but I don't want that great huge chair. I want a little chair that's quite rounded and elegant and rather nice. And the little table is okay, but I want it to be a round table, but I can't show that here, but I'll fix that later. And in the shelves above, the shelves I don't mind, I'm going to keep them, and I'm going to keep some merchandise here as well. So this would work out, you can, and then our banner. So that's not working out too badly for what it is I wanted to do. But they don't have to stay this way. You can change it up quite a lot. This is the display that's in the foreground. Maybe there's something sitting on top of it. Now with an elevation, you can't really tell what's in front of, how far things are away from each other. That's what the floor plan is for. But this is in front of the table, so I would have to show that here. And if I had a bust uh, on here, then I would have to show it in front of that shelf. So there's lots to do here, lots to think about, and lots of flexibility. You just have to figure out what will work for you, what will work best for you. And on our banners, each wall has a banner, so there's an opportunity on each wall for you to place your, your logo. And then after you figure out what this is going to look like, then you make a refined copy and you draw it more carefully. But spend lots of time in this loose stage figuring out what it is you want to go where. And then you begin to see where things look a little empty. So I think I would rather have my little table over on this side. And maybe have some flowers or something growing up. So that will give me something better over there. I've also in your package put a little bonus assignment. One thing that's really important is to draw from life. This little exercise is all about that. I want you to stand in front of your own bed at home, stand in front of the corner that's closest to you, and draw what you see, but draw with the understanding of what's going on as well. So this is nothing but a big two-point perspective box. That's why I chose your bed. You see, it's just a great big two-point perspective box, and it's doing everything that it should do. It appears smaller at a distance on this side than the part that's closer to us, and smaller from a distance on this side than the part that's closest to us. Pillows, they're great to draw because they slump, and after you've gotten out of the bed, just rolled out of it, then they're slumped and dented and they're really great to draw because you're drawing now two types of surfaces. A hard surface for the headboard and the footboard if you have them and also the bedside table is going to be a hard edge. And then you've got the soft billowy pillows and the soft duvet, whatever it is that you have. So. But really play around first. Just play around. Let your pen, maybe don't pick your pen up off the paper. Just kind of meander around. Mine, there's always so much stuff. There are books everywhere. There's hardly room for anyone else in the bed. <laughs> so much stuff. But at the same time, you see how they tumble and fold and these tumble and fold? So you kind of just get involved with all of that. But the main focus is to see underneath all that to the great giant two-point perspective box and get it to sit down in space so that it's not popping up. And that will help the work that we're doing in class a very great deal.